Hi everyone, Sandra here, and today we are making butternut squash fritters. It's going to be a side dish for me for dinner tonight, so I figured I'd just show you guys how I do it. So to start with, I have two cups of mashed butternut squash. Now when I made this, I had baked a couple of these in the oven and I only needed the one. So what you do is, is you, you get a decent sized butternut squash, cut it in half, take the seeds out, and then put it in a baking dish with about, <coughs> sorry, a quarter, quarter to a half a cup of water. And then, and you're going to put it flesh side up and prick the flesh here and there with a fork and then sprinkle it with a little bit of cinnamon and allspice. That's what I did. And then cover the dish, you know, uh, with foil and bake it at 375 for 45 minutes. You want it really soft. And then when it's done, let it cool down and it will come real easy out of that skin. It'll just scoop right up and then that's what you have here. I had to stop real quick because even though I think I'm pretty much over my cold, as you can tell, that cough is still hanging around, so I had to get a cough drop. But anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and put that two cups right in there. And then I am going to add a mm, quarter cup to a third cup of chopped chives. Now, you can use chives, green onions, um, regular onions if you want. You can even chop up and put in there some parsley or um, spinach. Do what you want, but I got chives in there. And then I'm going to add, now this is going to be kind of a little sweet savory dish. So I'm adding just a little bit of some cayenne pepper, just a couple shakes and we're good. I'm going to mix that all up. This is a great time of the year to use up some of your squash and it's a great recipe. Alright, we're good to go there, I'd say. Then, forgot you needed to add an egg, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Crack your egg and get that in there. You can uh, go ahead and mix it in there. You don't have to mix it a lot. Just maybe spread it in there. Because now we're going to add the flour. This is a cup of flour. Use whatever type you want. Just gonna mix it around a little. All the ingredients, of course, will be down in the description box. So go ahead and check there. Then we're gonna add a half a teaspoon of baking powder. Just sprinkle it around. And a couple shakes of salt. You don't need much. Now you are going to mix it pretty well. Get all those ingredients incorporated in there. I love cinnamon, allspice, nutmeg, all those warming spices at this time of the year. It's also good to keep you warm internally. Good for circulation, just healthy. see can you see that really well exactly how we want it now it's time to get them cooking okay in this pan I have grapeseed oil use whatever oil you choose that you like to fry in and there's a good amount in there you may need to add to it but hopefully not we're just gonna start putting You can go ahead and flatten them out, make them however big you want. 
too big I think is not a good idea because it'll get crispy on the edges right away but maybe not thoroughly warm in the center. So I may get three or four in here. You don't want to overcrowd your pan. And keep checking your heat. If your oil gets too high, you know, it's bubbling a little too much, then go ahead and turn that down a bit. But you don't want it too low. Otherwise, your fritters will just absorb a whole lot of oil. And they'll come out really greasy, and you don't want that. But these cook up fairly quick. So you can see they're already browning on the edges here. Looks good. Here in the center though, still a little soft. So I'm going to adjust my heat a little bit. I'm going to turn it down just a little. Move my pan a little here. I'm going to continue to flip these, or try to, right? Goodness. There we go. Whoops. I'm caught up. difficult time today, aren't I? Well, that one's really browned up. But you're going to do this with all the batter you have until you're completely done. Okay, and here's a little tip when you're frying stuff, whether it be fritters, onion patties, whatever. Um, it seems to be habit to put these on a plate with paper towel so you can you know, drain um, any of the extra grease or fat from them. And it, it makes sense, but when you do that, it tends to take away some of the crispiness. Um, it makes them a little more soggy. So if you could do like, um, right here, this is actually supposed to be for a uh, uh, grease splatter, like over a frying pan. So, it, it, so if you're making bacon or something, you don't make a mess. Well, anyhow, I have it sitting over a cookie sheet, so any extra grease will drain through there, and it keeps the patties crisp. You can also do this with, um, you know, the racks you use for cookies, cooling racks and that. And just put a pan like this, a cookie sheet or something underneath to catch any kind of extra fat. But um, I used to use just the broiler pan from my oven. That'll work, too. Something that's um, not soft, that's not, you know, something maybe a little more metal like this will help um, tremendously to keep your stuff crispy. Okay, so they are all done and they look fabulous. They smell wonderful too. And so when you're eating these, you can do it however you want. If you want to stay breakfasty with them, go ahead, put a poached or fried egg on top. That would be great. I like using syrup or applesauce, kind of like potato pancakes. But you can also put, um, you know, sour cream on here. Do what you want with them. Have them for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I got about a dozen out of here, and depending on how big you make them, how thick, it'll probably take two to three minutes per side. Just keep them, as you're pulling them out of the pan, keep them warm with a little bit of tin foil over the top. Anyhow, if you like the video, thumbs up it, uh, share it if you think somebody would like to know how to make these, and uh, subscribe if you're not a subscriber already. It was nice talking to you, and you take care.